This is going to be my next little video on, on uh, the Renishaw probing cycles and how to use them. I've, I prepared a piece of material, it's just a three quarter inch piece of aluminum. I drilled a 7 8 hole through it and we're going to mill a 900 thousandths bore. We're going to bring it out to size using the cutter compensation and the Renishaw probe to adjust the, the offset value on the end mill that's doing the finished cutting. Um, also, please, if you have any questions about anything I'm doing here, um, put it in the comments and I try to answer all questions. You know, people leave comments and, and I thank you for the nice comments about the videos, but I try to go through them and answer the questions if you have questions. So if you have a question about anything, leave it in the comments, please. So in order to keep this video sort of to a minimum size, let's go straight to the video and uh, see how I accomplish this with the Renishaw Pro. In order to understand a, a little about what we're trying to do here, we gotta understand how the machine accesses the information and these are called variables in the machine or how we access the information in the machine, I should say. And there's more or less three different kind of variables in most machines. There's local, common, and the machine variables. Now the local variables are, are um, usually letter assignments in cycles, like uh, can cycles, some people call them, or, or drilling cycles, um, patterns, cycles, uh, uh, rotations, you know, things like this, or, or even the cycles of the probing cycles, which are macros, use letter assignments. They, they usually range from A to Z, the letters of the alphabet. Some of these you, you can, can't use. Uh, um, I think O is, is one you can't use because it's designated for the names of programs. Um, those we're really not going to be dealing too much with in what we're discussing here because Renishaw in the in the probing cycles has already written the macros and we're just going to be using their macros they've already written so so these letter uh, arguments they call them would would be in their macros and we would have to input some but we won't actually be writing a macro to do that kind of a thing and then there's common variables which are the variable numbers from uh, 100 to 199 and from 500 to 599. And these are used for a lot of different things. You can use them yourself, some of them that aren't being used by the, the actual probing cycles of the probe or other things in the control. Um, so the probing cycles, I believe, use between uh, 135, which you saw in the, my previous video, I was showing you a little bit in the manual, to all the way to uh, 149, I think, for the actual outputs of the cycles. And then in the calibration of the probe, they use some, some in the area of 500 to 500 and something. I, I'm not sure I'd have to look on that, but... And so any of the others you could use yourself by assigning um, values to them and, and doing for the uh, for the use of your um, kind of macros that will be writing not really macros I guess they're just calculations and such and you 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 would assign values to variables and then do mathematical functions to do what you want so that's a that's a common variable and then the machine variables have to do with um, tool offsets, let's say, and, and work offsets, and uh, also the position information. of the machine itself, you know, like where the machine is located or where it's going or has been, that kind of thing. And, and uh, then there's others that we're not going to worry about here that are, have to do with alarms, maybe switches in the machine and, and uh, 
other things like that, other functions in the machine itself, that you can access some of those for the purpose of your program if you're doing that kind of thing. But for the probing cycles, we're just going to worry about about these you know, ones here. And we're not really going to be worrying about the local variables because they're already assigned in the, in the macros that Renishaw has written. So we're going to be using common and machine um, variables. And the machine variables that we're really going to be particularly interested in, of course, are the, are the, the work and the tool offsets. Because we'll be um, accessing and, and maybe altering these as we go with these cycles. The next question would be would be how we would actually access this information in the control and use it in a program. The 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 um, common variables is pretty straightforward in your program. If you have a line in your program, you could say pound. You always have to have a pound sign if you're dealing with one of these variables on the machine or the common variables pound 100 and then you just put like say equals 0.5 if you want to set pound 100 to 0.5 like that. Um, if you want to access a tool offset or a work offset you have to look in your manual and figure out what uh, variable numbers are assigned to them. On this Meldis control which is on this horizontal mill if we look in the manual, let me let me get the right page for what we're dealing with here. Okay, here, if we look at this, the, depending on what type type of offset page you have in your control. Now, my particular machine has this Type One offset page, which is just 200 straight offsets. There's no um, page that has like a tool one with the height offset and then wear for the height and the diameter and the wear for the diameter because that's the that's a type two offset page. So this machine has type one which is just 200 offsets use them any way you want for whatever you want so typically I use because the tool changer has 80 tools in it I use from 1 to 80 for the height offsets and from 100 to 180 for the the diameter, which in this case on this machine is actually radius for the for the tool diameter. So, if you look at this description here, the last three digits of this number are going to be for the offset. So, if I'm using offset one, it's going to be one zero 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 one for tool one, and if if uh, if I'm my diameter offset, I'm using 100 to be 10100 for that. So that's pretty simple. So it, in order to access this information, it's the same as what I said with the with this. You just you might if you want to actually enter an offset on the offset page, you for tool one, you have a pound 10001, and you would put equals and whatever whatever uh, number you you want to enter and if you want to bring that into your program you would you would do the opposite basically you would you would say you know pound one zero zero one times or plus or whatever you want to do with it in a calculation in a calculation with these on the control you have to put the the thing in brackets when you're actually doing a calculation but just to assign it you can just have it on the line like this pound 100 equals 0.5 okay so so that's uh, on this control these are the way the tool offsets are accessed or changed now the fixture offsets here like the the normal G54 to 59 are these parameter numbers so it would start out, you know, at 5,221 for 54, which would be the X, and this would be the Y and the Z, and then 
this machine only has one rotary axis which is the actually the fourth um, number so any you just add a four to these numbers and that's the B axis if you could have as many as six axes here you can go all the way up to six depending on your whatever rotary or, or linear axis axis the machine has or axes I guess that'd be so these are the normal standard offsets and then if your machine has extended offsets it it looks like this and these would be the parameters or, or, or variables I guess you'd say that you would be assigning so for the way you enter this in the program is G54 um, P1 uh, or it's G54.1 P1 I think I, I, I gotta look because I every time I do this I can't remember exactly but it but P1 is is the first offset and this and my machine um, it doesn't show them all here but it goes up to 200 of these you could have 200 external offsets they call them on these and you would access the the information either either enter it or access it through these variable numbers and at the control this is the position screen on on the Meldis control here to give you an idea, you can see some of these variables, like you can look at the local variables here, whatever they are, and there's actually five different pages of local variables. And then you can look at the common variables right here, pushing this button right there. These are the common variables. Um, and on the, the last video I showed you this this little section of the display of the common variables in a little uh, like box on the on the window and this has six different pages here goes up to there for the 199 and then uh, these start at the 500 and, and all of this data right here is the Renishaw calibration data here this would be the radius of the probe. See, it's a, it's a, you know, it's giving the radius and the, I guess it, it, in the calibration, it gets a trigger point. And I think some of these are the, this one and this one, I believe, are the, how far it's off center to the actual axis of the spindle and various things like that. When you, you indicate it in, but then when you calibrate it, it, it figures this all out based on the trigger point and the machine's, uh, actual location and so and they, this goes all the way up to, to um, 599 so those variables you can actually see physically what they are which is um, handy because you're going to be looking at these mostly if you actually want to measure something you just want to manually measure it there is a method with the Renishaw cycles. They call it the Easy Set cycles, and they and they can uh, you can manually just enter in a, a, a some code. If if I went over to this screen, see here, which is the MDI screen right now, you're looking at, and on these these are using the Easy Set cycles. I can I can set my fixture offsets manually with the probe by using these. And I've, I've used these, well, I used these on the last um, video just to line up on that aluminum piece I had in the vise. So these, you actually just run these lines and, and the probe will do what it's supposed to do and then it'll set the fixture offset, which is S1 here, designates G54 for this. And this will be the X direction, the width of the part, and the Y direction. The width, the width of the part up and down, and how deep and Z it's going to actually measure the sides, and then A9 point is, is just going straight down in Z to, to measure the Z depth, and uh, th that's all done manually. These, these, this is what Renishaw calls their easy set cycle, which is a, the, the macro of P9023. And these, these work the same on, on a, if, if the machine has the easy set programs, 
Uh, they, they work the same on a Fanuc control, this Meldus, the Haas. You can enter in this exact same line of code on the Haas control and it'll do exactly the same things because of the way they've written their macros to do it. So that's, that's a little bit on, on, uh, on the, the machine. If you're a little unsure what um, variable does what or you, you don't know exactly, I encourage you to experiment a little bit with your control. This is the MDI page on, on the Meldis control. I'm going to insert a couple of end of blocks here so I can insert some lines of code. And let's look at the... Um, we'll just do an experiment here. You know, if you're, you're looking at these at your manual and you say, you know, I wonder how this... if this number really changes what I think it changes. Like, it's pretty obvious here, but maybe in some other manuals it's not quite as clear as this, so you want to experiment. So this pound 5221 is going to change the x-axis um, setting of G54 in this control. So, you know, just go over to the MDI screen and, and uh, you're going to just pound 5221 like this and it equals equals, uh, say, 1.5 and a block and then down here, I'm just going to put an MOO to stop the program so I don't start running all this stuff down here. I, this machine, you can save, it saves the MDI information, which is really nice because right here is my tool change position and the pallet change cycles and uh, zeroing the B-axis and various fixture offsets here is what I've left in here, as well as some... Uh, you know, Renishaw cycles that I, I use manually. So right now we're going to do that. And if I push input on this machine, you look down here, it says MDI setting complete. And you come over here and make sure you're in the MDI mode with this MDI keys pushed. Then, then if I go over to the, um, I'm looking at the keys down here at the same time. I go to the, the tool and I, I'm on the work offset page already and if I push cycle start that 0.75 on the um, x-axis should change to 1.5 inches so that's that's the way you actually physically in your program you enter a number onto this offset page in this case so let's go back to the um, edit mode and let's do a little bit a little bit more complex situation here. Let's enter in. I'm going to insert and shift. I'm going to insert a bracket here. If you do a calculation, you have to have these, uh, I don't know exactly what they're called, bracket things. They're not parentheses because it'll just ignore anything in parentheses unless it's inside these brackets. Um, and we'll, we'll just do a some, uh, simple uh, division here, uh, divided by 2, and then we'll put another close bracket and an end of block, just like that. Uh, push the input, MDI settings complete, and then let's go back to our tool page, and when I push cycle start here, it'll change that to 0.75. So see, you, can, uh, you know, I would encourage you to experiment in the MDI mode with your uh, variables and see and learn looking at your manual and, and experimenting here you can learn what they do and how to make your entries here you know before you even run the machine on something because in these kind of programs it's kind of hard to uh, troubleshoot certain things when you're dealing with this when you got a big complicated program so in order to understand how the entries need to be, you can actually experiment here and do it pretty easily and see what happens. I could do the same thing with the, you know, with the tool offset page, you know, to change any one of these numbers. You see the way this tool offset page is on this control, and it goes all the way up to 200 offsets, and that's all it is. See, so there's, there's just 200 straight offsets, and there's not, not a normal offset page like you might see that has tool 1 with the height and the wear and the diameter and the wear, you know, and you go down 
all the way to the 80 tools that this machine has. So in this case, I have to use, I use tool offset one for the height offset of tool one. And I use um, back here, offset 100, which would be here for the radius. In this case, it's radius on this machine for that tool. So that must be a one inch pretty close to a one inch diameter cutter, right? Like one, tool number two, or excuse me, a, a 101 would be the first tool which would be a one inch diameter cutter right there. 100 is actually, I, I must have used it for something else because there's only actually 80 tools in this machine so this would be the last offset for height. But you could use any one of these for anything you wanted on this machine. It doesn't have to be designated to a specific tool even. I mean, you could use them in any pattern you'd like. I just do that because it's kind of easy to think about. Tool 1, offset 101. Tool 2, offset 102, and so on. For, for the off, two offsets on a normal tool. Let's look at the program. This is a very simple program just to, to mill a, a a bore that's 900 thousandths in diameter. I, I prepared the stock already and drilled it with a 7 8 drill so that we wouldn't have to do all that and just just for the purpose of the demonstration here. So this first tool number 9 just goes in there and roughs it out. Um, it's leaving 10 thousandths stock on the wall so it'd be 20 thousandths undersized roughly. And then here if you look at this line right here in the program it takes tool number eight which is the finish tool in this case and it's going to add five thousandths of an inch to the radius on the on the offset of 108 because I use 108 and tool eight for the length and tool 108 for the um, radius of the tool on my offset page like I showed earlier in the video how my offset page looks Okay, then it then it changes to tool eight here. The way this machine makes tool changes, you call the tool up and make a change. So back here, actually back here where it, it actually changed to tool number nine. See right here, you call tool nine and then you make the tool change and call the next tool. It's just the way this tool changer works. It's kind of unusual. So right here, I've got an N8 for a sequence number, but it it changes to um, tool 8, and then it puts tool 80, which is the spindle probe, in the arm waiting. So it's come down. It makes the the finish cut, but like I say, it's allow it's added the five thousandths to the radius offset. So it's gonna it's gonna intentionally machine an undersized. Then it changes to the spindle probe. And you'll see all this when I, I show it running, but it changes to the spindle probe here, but it doesn't call a tool into the spindle at this point, or into the arm, I should say, waiting. It just makes a tool change. This is typically the way you do the last tool on this machine. You just make a tool change and not call the, any tool at all. Okay, so it, then it's coming down and it's going to measure the parts. So it comes down here with a length offset to one inch above the part and then this G65P9810 is a protected move in the Renishaw measuring cycles and it's feeding down into the bore at 50 inches a minute so if you have this 9810 enabled if if it strikes anything with the probe it's going to immediately stop the machine while it's doing this move it shouldn't hit anything and it, and it didn't in this case but it, it this is just a protected move they call it and it's the 9810 um, macro program of Renishaw then P9814 is the um, I've got a number wrong here I edited this at the machine because I started out differently than that so this should be point nine. okay so 9814 is to measure a bore and then uh, it's going to try to go to 900, 900 thousandths 
for the board. Then it's going to retract the probe out and the protected move an inch above the part. Then it's going to go to Z zero or home position on this machine and it's going to move over to this position which is the tool change position. Then it's going to do this calculations. First we're going to set um, variable 100 to equal whatever the Renishaw output for the diameter was. That's, as you recall on the previous video, that was pound 138 was the variable they used for their output of the size. Okay, then we're going to set variable 101 to equal 900 thousandths just so we can do this calculation. So if this if statement, if pound 138 which is what the the probe measured is greater or equal to 900 thousandths though the bore is already to size it's gonna jump to n sequence 10 which is down here it's gonna make a tool change to an empty spindle and then then that's the end of the program but if this condition isn't true then it's gonna do this next line on the on the program which is gonna take pound 102 which is variable 102 here it's gonna make it equal to pound 100 minus 101 so if it measured the bore undersized here it's gonna um, subtract this 900 thousandths the, the target dimension from whatever it, the probe actually measured it and it's gonna set that well right here it's gonna set that on in, in variable 102 then we're gonna do this calculation to make our offset equal whatever the difference was so it's gonna take the offset as it exists and it's gonna add this will be a negative number if it subtracts nine a greater number from the smaller number right and it's gonna take that number right here and divide it by two because we're dealing with radius here if you weren't you wouldn't have to do that you could just do it straight if your machine used diameter for offsets but this one used radius so we gotta divide it by two and then we gotta add it to the existing offset so we're adding a negative number it's like subtracting that off of the number and it's gonna set that offset for the radius on tool eight which in my, in, like I explained before, my machine is offset 108 to whatever that number required to come back and machine that to size. And then this is just an optional stop here. If you don't have the optional stop button pressed, it, it'll ignore that. And then it's going to go call tool 8 back into the arm. Because we have an empty tool arm on this machine, the tool changer works that way and then it's going to go to end sequence number eight which is up here right here and it's going to change to tool eight and it's going to call tool eighty into the arm because it's going to need the spindle probe to measure against. So it's going to run the cycle and it's going to keep repeating that over and over again however many times it takes until it actually satisfies this condition right here of, of being greater or equal to 0.900 thousandths and then it's going to jump to here and the end of the program. So that's the code for this simple measuring cycle. It, it's just a, I just want to demonstrate this and show the code for this and how it works.
the offset page to see on 108, it changed, it was set at 0.25, and now it's reduced it to 0.2483 in an attempt to bring this bore here to size. So here's what the Renishaw probe measured, 9.9002. So that's greater than the 900 thousandths we specified, so it changed to an empty spindle, like I told it to at the end of the program. Here's a, um, just to verify that this thing came reasonably close, I set up a, a dial bore gauge here and a uh, um, set of gauge blocks not sure if you can read that, but see there's the 900 thousandths gauge block with the two end pieces. And I set this gauge up to a zero point. See if we can see that on the on the um, you know if I'm sweeping it through the gauge block set here to a zero point. And then we can check the, now we calibrated this gauge, we can check the bore that we milled on the machine to see how accurate it came out with the probe. Okay, we're at the, we're at the machine here and, and we got the dial bore gauge. We're gonna check the bore and see what we came up with as far as the size. Not too bad. The um, like I say, most machines uh, don't mill perfectly round circles, so we're within probably a couple of tenths of a thousand from where where the Renishaw probe. Remember, the Renishaw probe measured um, 0.9002. This bore is a little bit rough on there. The, the end mills are a little bit worn. It's within a two or three ten thousandths of what the Renishaw probe measured. 